I'm Wayne Rosa. I'm the artist of this show titled Mattering the Soul. Uh, it's here in the Olson Gallery at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Really, process is part of my subject matter. The idea of life is full of flux. And each moment may seem fixed, but in reality, life is a flow and it's, it's constantly shifting. So I like that kind of flow and a lot of my materials are pretty um, fluid. But it, it ends up resulting in a lot of layers. And so the, the closer and longer you look, the more you see the sort of flicker of one of, the, of a deep layer to a surface layer. You can kind of see the history of what I put down first, second, and third, and lift it out. So it kind of freezes a, a stretch of time and movement um, into a single image. I love this idea of using ordinary humble materials, but trying to get to an idea that's something that does transcend the ordinary. Um, and, and these are very ordinary materials. This is drywall primer and this is varnish. And you know, that a lot of current thought about the, for example, about the nature of a human self. The self is almost the meaning that resides between people. And so I like this idea of two forms and then their relations expressed by that, that delicacy between. Casting is a really interesting process and metaphor. The positive presence of these implies the absence of the thing that formed them. I mean, what are the things that have formed us? Our parents, our experiences, those are all absent now. But here we are. So these are all monotypes, and they're actually made with what's called a pen press. As I printed the first ones of these, I, I actually thought, you know, they, they remind me actually of elegant mirrors with gold frames. I love the idea of referencing the, the gold frame and then the mirror where there's a shimmering but mercurial image because the, the truth of that mirror and our thoughts about it is mercurial. And, um, a reflection is just an ordinary thing. You're facing a mirror, uh, but it is a thing. But a reflection is also philosophical contemplation. And mirrors are such a rich metaphor in our culture of you know, vanitas, truth-telling, um, imitation, copying. These three are the gnarly ones. We each have states of our own being, how we are. And if you look at this whole series, there's 22 paintings in this big series. It's, it's like I've tried to engage with a state of a different soul in each one. Not, port, not like portraits, way more subjective than that. And they're sized to be like the size of your body, the width of your shoulders and your height. I'm more interested like in the, the states of one's soul. And so for me to just to fold all that humanness into the materials themselves and let them be expressive. You know, I love how the layering happens here. There's violence in this one. The three on this wall, which are more ephemeral and delicate and uh, floating and... Until you get close, you don't even see the calligraphic line. Just like the quality and nature of the materials and what they express, you know, I find really beautiful. I can look at that for a long time. And again, it's the kind of vertical rectangle, which is figurative and also for me, landscape. Um, I grew up in a Wyoming landscape where the flat ground runs out to the horizon, very barren, and then the sky is huge. And in Wyoming, the sky is always full of clouds and wind. It's not necessarily menacing, but you just sort of feel like, I'm just this little barely solid thing here. And there's all this movement, this huge canopy of light and clouds and motion up there. Yeah, it's disquieting. Now, as delicate as these are, some of them have been roughly made. Like this one, there's a lot of orbital sanding like this white layer that was underneath and then this salmon layer that's over that. Both of those have been orbital sanded down to get that particular quality. This is the piece that surprised me the most in the show because I had been having my brother mail me this sandpaper from his hot rod business, you know, for, you know, since, for 20 years. And that started because I 
picked up one or two of these from his shop floor and folded it. And looking at it as a painter, I'm thinking, that is an incredibly beautiful abstract painting. And it's three parts, which is a triptych, which is an old medieval religious form. So it's a spiritual form, but it's like a tool. I am interested in this sort of slippage between matter and spirit. I think of both poles of that as sacred. I mean, I think of matter as something very, very significant, not something to get away from. So I, maybe it's not that I want to transform this to get away from it into that. I think I'm more interested in the marriage of these, the oneness of these things. At the end of last school year, I retired from teaching and administrating and have been trying to figure out, you know, how am I going to shape my life from here on out? So a friend of mine gave me this um, poem by Mary Oliver uh, called The Old Poets of China. It's very much about old age and leaving life's busyness and going to the mountains, kind of seeking enlightenment. And I thought, that, that's what I'm doing. So I love that poem and I decided to break it down into phrases. And for each phrase, do a visual meditation that would be a visual equivalent of that phrase. Not, not an illustration at all, but like a visual equivalent of that phrase. It is a collaboration. You have to be willing to do a dance with the water and the ink because you're sort of in control and you're sort of not. I think I did 70 of these to get 11 that worked.